Yes, hello, hello everyone. Hello people. Um, hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Um, I just got up here a few minutes ago. I had a dog barking this morning waking me up at four o'clock and I didn't get back to sleep. So I'm not, I'm just getting up pretty much, but I got to get this video out. It's a lot of material I was looking at last night. Um, so I'm going to come here and pretty much do another full long hour video probably because uh, I got a lot of material to cover. Uh, I'm going to be showing uh, pretty much uh, Byron Searle have a message. Uh, my friend Betty Stevens have another message, urgent message. Uh, my brother from uh, African Nations, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to be playing just a little bit of his video. I heard it last night. He was talking about the coronavirus and how to, uh, he got to do a part two. A part two video on how to really get through it you know how to get through this coronavirus and he's a very dynamic uh, young man uh, love the Lord been walking with the Lord for many years since he was a baby I've been trying to introduce you guys to, to some of you guys to him but I'm gonna be showing a little bit of his video not a whole lot but just some things he's saying and then you can go and listen to him and subscribe or whatever but um, I'm going to be showing uh, these main three videos. And also Carrie Geddon. Carrie Geddon has a message I have to get out to you as well. So I have mostly messengers today, Another some more messengers today. Uh, I will be showing very little news, uh, just a little bit of the news. I will put the links all in the description box. But I just want to show you a little bit of updates on the news in Israel. We've gone back into war again. War is really breaking out, people. As we know, we're going to have war, war, war. And bloodshed and strife is all around us. Uh, we need to be really, really giving our life to Messiah. As Jonathan brought out in his video, Yeshua have taken away all what he can take away from you. Uh, from sports to entertainments to grocery stores to everything shutting down, closing down. I was looking at a picture yesterday in Canada, the malls all showing, sh shutting down that one lady was showing. Uh, we just got to have all these things happening because he's trying to reach you. He's really trying to reach you to understand that we are in the end at the end. It's time to stop the plan. It's stop, time to stop the partying. It's time to stop all this fiasco and really give your life to the father who made you, the guy who man, the man who made all living things, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I'm going to be uh, just showing you these materials. Now, and before I get into a song, I want to play this Oh Holy One song by Barry and Bathal. I love their music. Uh, I'm going to play it. And then I'm going to start the video out, and then I'm going to go over here to an article that my husband just gave me. Uh, he had to go out a bit, but he just gave me this, and I thought it was really funny. <laughs> As the Sabbath is approaching us here in a few hours. But look at here, Pope Francis calls on believers to keep the Sabbath. Bishop of Rome and leader of Worldwide Catholic Church, Pope Francis has called on believers to keep the Sabbath as the Jews followed and still observe. We live with the accelerator down from morning to night, Francis said. This damages mental health, spiritual health, physical health. Most so it affects and destroys the family and therefore society. On the seventh day he rested. What the Jews followed and still observed was to consider the Sabbath as holy. On Saturday you rest one day of the week. That's the least out of gratitude to worship God, to spend time with the family, to, pl to play, to do all these things. We are not machines. Now, and isn't that amazing? Well, how, I don't even know what to believe what the Pope says because, you know, this man's crazy. He goes from one thing to another. I know that he has blasphemed the Holy Spirit, so I don't really follow what the Pope has to say. But this is one correct thing that I have to agree with him here. But uh, down at the bottom, it says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will rest soul, and when you will rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Yes, 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 indeed. That's why I'm going to play my song here, O Holy One. And then I'm going to get over to the other articles and videos and things to show you here. Hawaii just had a 3.9 quake. We got uh, things going on in Israel. Uh, we just got a lot of things happening every day, every hour, people. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video and hope you can get something out of all the messengers coming through today here. 
So let me go ahead and play my song and get over to um, the news and uh, these messengers. Okay, so let me go ahead and mute this out. Um.
TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Israeli military enters a state of war as Jerusalem declares a nationwide curfew, bringing the Jewish state to a near halt in efforts to combat the unyielding spread of the coronavirus pandemic. In spite of Israel's state of emergency, political bickering continues to distance the prospects of a national unity government. The political deadlock in Jerusalem is seemingly sowing uncertainty and panic among many of Israel's citizens. The number of Israelis infected with the coronavirus throughout the Jewish state rose this afternoon to 705 confirmed cases, including nine that are classified as seriously ill and an 89-year-old woman whose condition deteriorated into critical stages. In response to the worsening situation and ahead of an anticipated nationwide curfew, the IDF entered its highest state of alert which practically means the Israeli military's emergency preparedness for war. Subsequently, the interim government in Jerusalem, under the leadership of incumbent Prime Minister Biamin Netanyahu, announced a series of new, stricter measures that effectively forces the entire country into isolation. In his opening remarks, Premier Netanyahu highlighted once again the extensive efforts undertaken by his interim government amid the unrelenting consequences from the contagion spread. הנהגנו חובת בידוד מרחבת, הטלנו הגבלת התקהלות, דיללנו את מקומות העבודה והפעלנו אמצעים דיגיטליים לאיתור ולבידוד של חולי קורונה. הצעדים הללו האטו את קצב התפשטות המגפה בישראל בהשוואה למדינות רבות בעולם. אבל המגפה מוסיפה להתפשט. היא כבר גבתה אלפי קורבנות בעולם. גם בארץ מספר החולים גדל מדי יום. לשמחתי, עד לרגע זה איש בישראל עדיין לא מת מהקורונה. אבל לצערי, זה לא צפוי להימשך. For the first time in Israel's history, Netanyahu announced Jerusalem's decision to implement emergency ordinances, including a nationwide curfew in which Israeli citizens will be forced to remain indoors. בהגבלות הללו אתם, אזרחי ישראל, נדרשים להישאר בבית. עכשיו זה כבר לא בקשה, זו לא המלצה, זו הנחיה מחייבת, הנחיה שתאכף על ידי גורמי האכיפה. The Israeli leader further stressed that while the measure is unprecedented since the foundation of the Jewish state, so is the coronavirus which demands radical measures. As part of this decision, Jerusalem's interim cabinet approved the unprecedented measure and equipped the country's enforcement authorities with the tools to forcefully administer the measure, including a financial fine for any individual breaking the nationwide home isolation, amounting to 5,000 shekels, which is equal to about 1,300 euros, or a little under 1,400 U.S. dollars. The cabinet's decision also included fines for a legal assembly of 3,000 shekels, which is equal to about 775 euros, or 845 U.S. dollars. It is important to highlight, however, that the general public will be granted permission to leave their homes for the purpose of purchasing food, medicine, and other vital necessities. Furthermore, the health ministry will permit vital employees to continue their work, and unorganized sports will be permitted in groups of up to five people. In light of the deteriorating situation, interim Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu emphasized the need for unity among Jerusalem's leaders, urging his political rival blue and white chairperson Benny Gantz to convene a national emergency government. <laughs> כשהאויב החיצוני צר על חומות ירושלים, יד איש נשלחה באחיו, 
והאסון לא איחר לבוא. ולכן אני אומר, דווקא היום, אנחנו חייבים לאחד כוחות. אנחנו חייבים להקים ממשלת אחדות. אנחנו חייבים להתכנס לממשלת חירום לאומית. אני אומר לאנשי כחול לבן, כנסו מתחת לאנוקה. נישא אותה יחד, נוביל אותה יחד, ויחד, יחד נושיע את העם ואת המדינה. In response to Netanyahu's plea for a national emergency government, Blue and White Chairperson Benny Gantz accused the incumbent premier of making cynical use of the crisis for political reasons. Nevertheless, Gantz, the lieutenant general in reserve who served the Jewish state as the former IDF chief of staff, highlighted his lifelong mission to protect the citizens of Israel, emphasizing that when it comes to combating the spread of the corona contagion, All of the leaders in Jerusalem are mobilized to operate as one unit. אנחנו בשעת חירום בריאותית וכלכלית, שעה שבה כולנו נדרשים לגלות אחריות אישית ולאומית. דווקא בימים אלו חשוב לי לומר לכם, שלמרות שאין בישראל ממשלה נבחרת מתפקדת, ולמרות כל רעשי הרקע, בנושא המאבק בקורונה, כולנו מגויסים כאיש אחד, ומבחינתי, זהו גם שיקול משמעותי ומוביל בהתנהלות הפוליטית. In recent days, incumbent parliament speaker Yuli Edelstein, who is a member of Netanyahu's Likud party, forcefully postponed the formation of the parliamentary committees over accusations that Blue and White are operating in bad faith. Edelstein claimed that Blue and White had refused to consider the good of the public that was coping with the difficult problems created by the coronavirus, which prompted his decision to keep the Knesset closed until next Monday. In response to this decision, Blue and White chairperson Benny Gantz accused the Likud party of undermining the will of the Israeli public. Beside the health of the health and the health, I know that many of you are concerned about it, like me and the truth, from the completely democratic and without the evidence שכופים בימים אלו נתניהו ואדלשטיין על עבודת הכנסת. זהו מעשה לא ראוי שפוגע בכל אזרחית ואזרח, ולכן כחול לבן תפנה לבג"ץ על מנת שזה יתערב. While the Likud secured the most mandates in the third Israeli election, which were held on March 2nd, it fell to secure a necessary majority within Israel's 120-seat Knesset. That is why Blue and White immediately demanded to advance legislation to bar an indicted Knesset member from serving as Prime Minister in a transparent effort to end Netanyahu's grip on Jerusalem's seat of power. Nevertheless, the Speaker of Parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew, sought to torpedo these efforts by refusing to open the plenum and the necessary committees that would allow for the advancement of the referred to bill. The move infuriated Blue and White, which accuses the Likud now of undemocratic conduct over its refusal to transfer the power reins of Parliament. משבר, גדול ככל שיהיה, אסור שיגרום לריסוק הממלכתיות ולפגיעה ברצון הבוחר. לליכוד אין רוב בכנסת ולכן הוא סוגר אותה, ואנחנו לא נאפשר זאת. And while the deep divides in Jerusalem's political arena persist, the deadlock seemingly sows uncertainty and panic among many of the citizens of Israel who are forced to deal with an unprecedented nationwide curfew. Very depressing. I cannot believe all clothes like Yom Kippur in Israel. Depressing. We hope we will get over. That's our prey. Less people will die, less people will be sick, so we have to take care. It's mostly scary. I think we're in a scary situation. Uh, there's panic, uh, a physical and obvious panic you can see around the city. It's, it's very clear at all times. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace and salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the coronavirus. Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.
Daily News. Thank you for joining me. Those of you that have followed me, I have talked about the earthquakes and the magma lava there in Hawaii. I told you how we have to watch Palahala, Hawaii, as uh, the earthquakes that get shallower in that location could be an indication of the magma flowing to Mauna Loa and its uh, eruption would be an indication of things that we need to watch. There was a magnitude 3.9 earthquake. That would have been yesterday. 88 people reported feeling that earthquake. This earthquake was about 331 feet above sea level. Now, I've told you how all earthquakes are measured at sea level. This magnitude 3.9 was felt all across the big island of Hawaii. Most of these recent earthquakes there at Palahala have been real shallow. 1.9, 0.8 kilometers. Um, 1.9 minus 0.6 kilometers. That means it's above sea level. Um, a 2.0, 0.4 kilometers. 1.9, 0.2 kilometers. The 3.9, which I just showed you. A 1.7. Now that was 5.5 kilometers. Uh, what else we got for Palala? See how originally they were real deep, about 31.5 kilometers. And we'll go down. See, this one was originally um, 32.6 kilometers, and that would be, so that would be um, a little deeper than 20 miles below sea level. Yeah, and all of a sudden they started getting shallower. I probably found a way. Now this one here is 31. There's probably a fissure. Um, it's finding its way to come up, or it could be just ground deformation. Uh, let's see what we got more recently. Um, volcano, Hawaii. Now that's up by uh, Fisher 8 where it erupted, what, two years ago, 0 0.3 kilometers. Another one, minus 1.1 kilometers. That means it's above sea level. Uh, 1.2 kilometers, Palahala. Yeah, I think we got magma on the move once again there in Hawaii. As you recall, I told you that I will be bringing final warnings uh, different things the Lord said until I am done now whenever that may be so I will you know we are experiencing a lot of spiritual attacks right now on the website on our PayPal everywhere all of a sudden I'm experiencing some problems here um, and we always know attacks will come when you're doing whatever whatever you know God is telling you to do whatever's right but right now we're experiencing some very heavy attacks, as I'm sure many are, and trying to stop the processes, trying to stop getting the word, the messages, to place where we need to be, all of that. And so I am going to continue. I am not giving up, and I'm not saying this because I'm in fear, but this is the way it is in the times we're living in. And so we all need great prayer for each other to counteract whatever's going on in the, in the demonic realm and, and to cover each other. That is so very important to cover each other. So this morning, it's very early here, and I want to just come with this. I just want to give you a reminder and a sharp warning that came from the Lord to tell the people. I was given a quick, a quick vision, and I was in hell again. Um, this time, and I'm not writing all this. I'm doing it on video because sometimes my hands hurt, my, and I just get very tired, and I have to stop. So I'm going to just do a video real quick. This is very important that everyone hear this because of the times we're in. 
in this vision, I was back down in hell. The Lord escorted me. His fire is what escorted me. This time I did not get a complete picture of him, but I did feel his presence and I saw the fire next to me walk. And I know there was an arm along the elbow of my left arm. He was escorting me and to help again. And when it is a personal escorting, it means that I am to pay attention. There is something going on. And yes, there are things going on in hell. Much, much activity. Um, the smell of sulfur remains the same. It is the stench of their sin. This is what the smell is. However, however, it is very interesting to note that when the, the Father, when the, when the Lord is in there, everything instantly becomes quiet. There's no noise, nothing. And so, as we went down, and I know that I was deep, very, very deep. Um, when you are on the other side, in the spiritual realm, okay, you do not speak like we are speaking or talking now. It comes from the spirit. And you almost instantly, whether it's a question or not, instantly it is answered. Um, and so I'm listening. I'm just all of a sudden people are beginning to speak because they know the Lord is present and they are crying out to him for mercy. They are also crying out to him to give them another chance. And as they do, it is very, oh, it, because it's a very intense moment and we continue to walk. The Lord has turned his back and doesn't say anything and continues as we walk on. And then as we stop in front of a place, I saw somebody that was being very, um, just crying, just, just crying. That, I mean, sobbing and wailing. And He allowed me to see, he allowed me to hear the painful sobs, the wailing, the endless fear, because there's no return. And then this soul began to speak and said, looked up, just looked up and said, tell my family, tell the people not to come here. If I would have known if I would have had but another moment, if I would have had more time. Please tell the people. And then she went back to her wailing and her crying. You could tell she was alone. There was no one to comfort her. There was no nothing, and we moved on, and many of the people were in that time of, of wanting the Lord to see him and, and cry out and everything, and as the vision ended, he said, go back and tell the people, and I will give you the words you need to say. That was the end of the vision. So I am here, I give you the quick vision, that is the end of that, now I'm going to give you the words. And this is not my opinion, or my own thoughts, okay? I've been to hell twice. This is not something that I asked the Lord to do, but I am available for Him. And I won't, as bad as it is, I will not turn away whatever God wants to show me, whatever God wants to do. I won't turn away. And so, 
The words of the Lord are this. There are many people right now here in this hour that are struggling to understand what is going on and why there has been no let up. I'm coming very slow to you, so please bear with me. The Spirit is speaking and giving me the words as I'm giving them. So this is not a fast, let's get done with it. This is a very serious time and word. And I am here to tell you that time is running out. It has ran out for a long time. And we, many of us, think that we're going, to, we're going to have more time, that that we can take advantage of what time and do whatever we want and say whatever we want and look at whatever we want, and we still believe that God thinks that's okay, he won't mind, and that we have time, that if, you know, we need to have time, we'll have it. But just through this vision... That was not the case with them, thinking they had more time. When it was time, their time was up here on earth. When their soul was called, it was called into eternal damnation, into the abyss, until the final judgment. Because hell, as you want to call it, or the abyss, is a holding place only. So I'm just giving you the words and the understanding from the Holy Spirit because he is right here and he is speaking to my spirit as I am speaking to you. And so the Lord has kindly given me this message to give to all of you, whoever you that will listen to the video, that their heart will come together in one accord with the Lord. It is not too late yet to turn around and come back to him. It is not too late to ask forgiveness of whatever your sin may be. Do not allow the enemy to put you in a place of complacency and thinking that God can never forgive you and that it's too late and it's over for you. Don't allow that. This is what the Spirit is telling me. Rather, know and understand that you can call on the name of the Lord. You will be saved. You ask forgiveness because God loves you. He loves me. He loves you. It's not you. It's the sin and what's going on and the evil that God hates so very much because in his perfecting, in his love that is perfect, he cannot stand where sin abounds. His pure love, his pure grace, the pure character and righteousness of God cannot stand with sin. And that is why And that is why God gives the chance to be eternally brought back to him so that you will not go into that place and you will not be there because eternity is forever. So if you are still in the world, I don't care what it is. Maybe you're pursuing a job or you're pursuing school or you're pursuing raising a family or what have you. That might be okay right now for a little while. But if your first isn't with God and these things have become an idol to where, oh, I've got to have it now. I can't break because the Lord wants me to be with him. I can't stop. I am busy pursuing. I am busy. What busyness are you doing? Are you busy? B-U-S-Y? 
being busy for Satan? B-U-S-Y, busy under Satan's yoke? Or B-U-S-Y, busy under the Savior's yoke? We have to make a distinction here. And it's going to have to happen quickly. Very quickly. With that vision came a quick turnaround, seeing souls screaming and falling into the pit. And I don't know their story. I don't have to know their story or why they're there. Because all one day, whatever God wants to show me and share, what I'm allowed to release, that is what I do. But in the end scheme of things, all sin will be exposed everywhere. Everything will come out. Everything. Nothing will ever be hidden. And so the Spirit is wanting me to bring an invitation again while there is still time to understand the reality of eternal damnation versus the reality of heaven. And which side you are on. This is a very precise time. Um, it is a time of cleansing. If you are truly uh, wanting to be cleansed and know for sure where you're going to spend eternity. As I said earlier, this virus is a front because of them wanting to tote the vaccine. It's all in the vaccine. All in the vaccine. Everything that they need, that you need to know, is in the vaccine. And the Lord has warned, do not take it. I don't care if it comes in the form. You know, again, the choice is yours. Satan is going to try to bring and make this very easy in different forms. It is still not of God. I'm not even, I'm not even um, going to say anything more of that. But it is not the virus. It is in the vaccine in different forms. Um, God has shown me some other things about it. Um, but right now, we have to make sure we're right. That's where our core being should be. Yes, we are to know the enemy's tactics. We are to be aware. We are to be vigilant. But over and above that, we have to be ready. We have to be rooted and grounded that the enemy is not going to bring fear and, and do not think he is going to destroy God's church. We're not finished yet here. There are plans in the making. God is coming off. It's what I saw a while back. God is coming off his throne. He's looking. The angels, Michael, Gabriel, and the cherubims have come off their seats to look because God's people are rising and we need to rise up more and speak God's word into people's lives. Blow the shofar like I did. Yes, like I told you. I don't practice it all the time, but the Lord said, blow it anyway, because I'm giving the sound, not you. So I'm obedient to whatever God wants to do. And yes, when you are obedient, you will suffer attacks and consequences but from the enemy but either way either way we are to be obedient to God we are to do what he says walk when he says walk stay put when he says stay put go to the right or the left when he tells us and if he hasn't told us anything stay where you are until he does we are to attune ourselves to him because not everybody is going to hear and have the same thing given to them. So you need to be very focused in this hour. 
Spend your time reading the word. Spend your time in prayer. If God wants you to fast, fast. If you can't fast, then you can't fast. Or if you can only fast a little because of medical conditions, then that's fine. If you don't have a lot of money to prep, then prep what you can. That is common sense. That is why Joseph and them were told to prep. That is why Noah's in his day was told how to prep and where he would be. It is common sense to do what you can and to listen to the Lord as he gives the instructions. Maybe it is not your time to go anywhere. Maybe it is not your time. But you do as the Lord says. And whatever somebody else is doing, then that's for them. That may be for others as we move into these final days. We are moving into the final times. The final times. And so we pray and we do what we can because if we are rooted and grounded in the Lord, allowing him to, he's, this virus is more, more than just what the enemy is doing. It is a time of great and deep testing to see where the hearts of the people truly are. And that if what they are saying in regard to him is truth. It is a time of deep contemplation. Deep fire. And God is saying, I'm examining you. And ask him to go deep. Because we, you don't want the enemy to have anything to, you know, over your head. And whether you are sick. Whether you are well, whatever, God knows and all of this is the intents and motives of the heart and who can know the heart because it is decisively wicked and only he knows it, not anyone else. You know, as people, we see what we want to see and we even some go further and judge what they don't understand because they fear what they can't understand. And that is not the way God operates. So we need to, la to allow God, regardless of the circumstances, to go deep because he is knocking on doors and hearts to see where we really are. And this is a time of self-examination a time of repentance, a time to get in that place with the Lord, a time to even, if you can, break bread if your temple is truly cleaned and if, and if you really are going to work and, and for the Lord and with the Lord in the hours in which we are, or are you going to just sit back and do nothing? And I'm going to tell you right now, there is one thing. If that is all that God is calling you to do, if that is all you can do, and that is prayer. Prayer and intercessing. Prayer is a very great component here. It is very, very important. It will break down barriers. It will break down walls. When you're reading your word, when you wonder, well, well, how should I pray? Pray the Our Father. Pray the Psalms. Pray over Psalm 23, Psalm 91. Pray. Even sing them. You're in your own time with the Lord. Listen, God is looking. He is looking down here. He is getting ready to do a mighty thing. The power of God is going to be shown on the earth very soon. This thing that we are going through is a test. And yes, there is more and worse coming down the pike. But God, and I have said this before, I've said it in so many times, that amidst all the judgments... God is going to show himself strong. 
Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe God? Are you going to stand on his word? Are you going to stand on his promises? Or are you going to fall back in fear? Or fall back because you're not maybe where God you think God wants you to be. God is going to tell you. He will come to you. And he, and he alone, will be God for you. And I'm here to tell you and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes, there is turmoil. Yes, things are going to get worse. We are in the final days now. We are in the final times. But over and above that, God is going to show himself. He is getting ready to come down and show his power and manifest his word so that all will know who he is. It is a time to do warfare on the enemy. Not allow him to get more and more on the church. It is a time that though the church has been silenced in this time of shutdown or what have you, wherever these are going on, but we can pray. We are not shut down yet. We still have the times in our home. God is showing you, as he showed us years ago, there will be home churches. There will be home groups. You call it what you want. And the power of God will fall in these small groups. The power of God, he says, wherever two or three are gathered, he is in our midst. The power of God will fall. He's showing us through this time to begin to receive what God has for you. There are ways we can gather. It doesn't have to be right out there in big gatherings and conferences and churches. God's people do not have to shut up. We still be, need to be thankful that the internet is open for whatever time it is. Thankful we have a telephone. Thankful that at least our utilities are on. And pray and thank Almighty God. He wants to hear from you, not through someone else. He wants you to open up your heart. He wants you to open up your spirit to receive him, to speak to him. It isn't just about praying and sitting in silence. That's not what the Word of God says. We are to pray. We are to be diligent. We are to break through. We are to stand firm. And the power of God will do the rest. Amen? We are not forsaken or all orphans. We have the kingdom and the power of God. We know how to war. This is a war. This is a spiritual battle we're in. We do not have to let the enemy take us right now. We don't have to do that. We have the power. We have the word. God will give you all you need. This is a time of great testing upon the body of Christ. This is a time of great example upon a fallen world that is going to be looking and is starting to look toward the church. And if we are silent and are, we are in fear, God can't work in a church that is fearful and out of control. And God is coming back to bring up the real church with the powers that were given on Pentecost. He's doing that now in some places. There has to be more. He, God is not done. He is telling me he is not done. It is not over yet. So I am here. I'm declaring the year of the Lord despite the judgments. I'm proclaiming prepare ye the way of the Lord. And look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. And as God pours out his spirit. As God pours out his blessings. Don't forget where you get them from. It is from God. Everything we have. Even our children that we are blessed with. Our grandchildren. We are stewards. They belong to God. Everything we have belongs to God. This is not our home, but we are in it for a season. 
to work while there is still time. Whew. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is the end of the word. Uh, Tanzania, Mozambique, Kenya, and sold them all over the world. Uh, in Iraq, Iran, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, you know, you know, uh, the Arab slave trade of the Bantu people. Okay, so we were attacked by Christianity, and we were attacked by Islam. Now, all of a sudden, these two religions have cancelled their prayers. R the Roman Catholic Church, not only that, the Evangelical Church. Hmm. I live in South Africa, my brothers and sisters, and we have a lot of these prophets and pastors and all these things, okay? The, the mega ones. Trust me. The, the American church is big, okay? But you've never experienced church until you come to Africa. You, church in Africa is, what you see in America is nothing. West Africa have the biggest churches in the world. There are big churches in, in East Africa. Central Africa, Southern Africa, Christian, Pentecostal, Charismatic churches, okay? Now, in South Africa, we have uh, big pastors. You all know that pastor who so-called raised someone from the dead. Uh, we have another one who calls himself Major One. And uh, you all know the big pastor, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, a friend of Benny Hinn, okay? So at the same time, They've canceled all their services. They've canceled all their services. I couldn't believe. Uh, Major One, as he calls himself, has the biggest church in South Africa. It is full to capacity. Full. He decided to cancel his services. Uh, the pastor who, who faked the miracle canceled his services too. And all the services are going to be online. So they're not going to meet. Okay. And these are people who heal and deliver people, who perform miracles, okay? They, they are miracle workers, okay? What is happening? And the president of South Africa has met with all the church leaders, okay? And uh, the Pentecostal and charismatic pastors and even the Muslims and all other faiths, faiths okay? So they met uh, together and they decided... Cancel all your services, even with the synagogues, the Ashkenazi rabbis, and all these things, okay? And I hear they are planning to do a national day of prayer, where they're going to put all the faiths together, and they're going to pray against all the pestilences of the world. Us who are prophetic, us who are spiritual, know exactly what is happening. Brothers and sisters... This thing that you're seeing with coronavirus is not the full, full judgment. It's the beginning of sorrows. Life won't be the same again. I am telling you the truth. For us who are spiritual, we know. Okay? Other people, things may go back to so-called normal. Okay? But something has shifted in the spiritual world. Something has shifted in the spiritual world. Number one, the churches are closed. Okay? The schools are closed, okay? Uh, the entertainment industry has been hit, okay? What is the Spirit saying? Number one, the Spirit is telling us to prepare. Coronavirus was just a small test. There are other things that are going to come, even bigger than coronavirus, okay? There are other things that are going to come, even bigger than coronavirus, and I'm going to tell you how to prepare. Okay, number two, the spirit is is telling us to pray at home. Hallelujah. The spirit is telling us to. I'm going to develop this in a few uh, minutes. The spirit is telling us to pray at home, spend time with your family. Hallelujah. Spend time with your family. The world is shut down. Okay, the world is shut down. It's a sign. We, we have to uh, have a uh, we have to have retro retrospection, look within ourselves, okay, and make things right with our family members, 
make things right with uh, whoever, okay, and focus on our families, focus on our relationship with, with the Most High, focus on things that matter, because this Babylonian system is being shut down, okay? This Babylonian system, the system of beba, babi, beba, confusion has been shut down. So the Spirit of the Most High is telling us to pray at home. Think of things that matter. Hallelujah. Look at how much money we used to waste on sport. Look at how much money we used to waste on just going to church, paying our tithes and offerings. Okay? Do those things really matter? What about family? What about your wives, your children? Your wife, your wives. Some of you have multiple wives. Okay. Your wives, your children, uh, your parents. Okay? These are the things that matter. Hallelujah. These are the things that matter. This Babylonian system has trained us to chase after money, to chase after success and all these things. Now it has shut down. Sport has been, football has been sh shut down. All sports have, have been shut down. Now people are even having a withdrawal, withdrawal syn syndrome. Okay? What am I going to do this weekend? No parties. I'm not going to go out and drink. The Most High is, is, is trying to reach you. He's trying to reach you. Many of you who love to party, who love to go out, who love to do all these things, the Most High is trying to reach you. Get your life in order. Hallelujah. We need to get our lives in order and focus on things that matter. That is why many people are staying at home. People are staying at home, my brothers and sisters. People are staying at home. Hallelujah. People are staying at home. But a lot of people are not prophetic. That They don't know how to interpret the signs, my brothers and sisters. Isaiah said, you must interpret the seasons. This is a season of interpretation. Hallelujah. I never said it's the full judgment. It's just a sign of greater things to come. Because these are the beginning of sorrows, my brothers and sisters. These are the beginning of sorrows. These are the beginning of sorrows. And life won't be the same again. Trust me. Trust me. And I'll prove it. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at uh, all the financial systems that have been down. Do you know what economic <laughs> effect is going to have? We may not sense it now, but in the future, in the future, there's going to be economic uh, repercussions like never before. Small businesses are going to lose out. All these things. If we had prepared, there are people who have farms, there are people who have... Who, who have prepared. You know, in tragic times, there are some people who flourish in tragic times. Hallelujah. Look at the story of Yosef, you, Joseph. There was a famine, but because of, of his prophetic gift, he saved Africa. He saved Africa. He saved Africa. He saved Africa. <laughs> ah, it's prophetic. I even got this thing of Africa. No, it ain't voodoo. I know some of you are saying, no, this guy is trying to eat voodoo. I got this thing, hallelujah. Yosef, you saved Africa, Kamata, because of his prophetic dream. Because of his dream and visions, he prepared during a famine. <laughs> there may be famines, but there are people who, the, who have prepared for years, and they're good. Hallelujah. A wise man sees evil before it comes and prepares for it. The Bible says, uh, prepare. Uh, I think the horse is prepared for, uh, for battle in the book of Proverbs. Preparation, my brothers and sisters. So there's going to come economic repercussions. <laughs> Hallelujah. You saw people fighting over toilet paper. People fighting over hand sanitizers. Why? The spirit of fear. And this is what I want to deal with. Hallelujah. Yad Dwayne did a wonderful job on that. I want to touch on it a bit. And then, I'm, oh, and then we're going to end the video. Okay. Uh, look at uh... Hi guys, this is your sister Karen Gidden in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I just want to come to you uh, with with a revelation that the Lord has laid on my heart and I want to share it with the body 
of Yah, amen, with the body of the Messiah, with the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, as you know, uh, the pandemic that's going on, I've done several videos concerning the man-made biological warfare pestilence. I've also highlighted, brothers and sisters, through the Spirit, um, many weeks ago, that this thing, uh, it is coming, it is, it is tracked. That's the word I'm going to use. It is tracked through chemtrailing and the 5G. And, and, and that is very, very real, brothers and sisters, because at this moment in time, really and truly, uh, these scientists, these so-called scientists that's on the front line heading the corona man-made pestilence, truly they don't really know how it is spread. You know, the really the, you know the, the advise us to wash our hands, wear the face mask, don't get in contact with people and all of that. But brothers and sisters, I truly believe that this thing is airborne through chemtrail, hallelujah, through chemtrailing and the 5G. It's becoming airborne. I really, really believe that. And one of the reasons why this is so impressed on my spirit, brothers and sisters, if you notice how the government in the world, not only England and America, but everywhere in the world, see how the governments are operating, shutting everything down, you know, stay in your home and all of that. Brothers and sisters, the corona will get worse before it gets better and they know it they 150 percent know it because they've created something that they cannot control because what's happened whatever they've created in the lab amen whatever they've created in the lab brothers and sisters this thing has taken on a new form it keeps mutating and if you remember, I advise you when you have time, because it's a lot of videos and I appreciate that. Uh, but if you have time, if you check my corona fi coronavirus files, in there you'll find about 12 videos. This is going to probably make the 13th one that I've done concerning this thing. And in one of those videos, brothers and sisters, I was very, very explicit I said that when this thing begins to uh, mutate, that it will affect young people. It will affect young people, brothers. At the moment, it's mostly, you know, middle age and all of that. But when it comes in its full completion of mutating, young people and children will be affected, brothers and sisters. You know, this is, a, this is the way how this thing is going until... It runs its course and the Most High steps in and says enough is enough because he will. Hallelujah. So we can rest assured those of us who are in Yah, those of us who are in the Most High, we can rest assured that God will stop this thing in his track. All right. So we shouldn't fear or have no, you know, second thoughts. Where is Yah in all of this? Because he's right there. But the importance of this video, brothers and sisters, is this. And this is where I really want you to, to, to listen very, very keenly. Please share this information to your families and to your friends. This is where I am coming to you. This is the revelation that's been on my heart. I wanted to put this video out, but because of, yeah, I couldn't get to do it in time. But praise be to the most high, I am doing this video now. Brothers and sisters, this man-made pestilence, this corona, is a test run for the mark of the beast. It is a test run for 666, because this is how Satan works, okay? You know, he always does test runs. Well, he thinks he's doing it, but the Most High is in control anyway. Because he think because the devil thinks he can mock the Most High, right? He thinks he can mock Yah, but yeah, we know that nobody in this world, not in heaven or earth, can mock the King of Glory. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. So, brothers and sisters, this is a test run, a test run. For the mark of the beast, which is going to be the final, 
Hallelujah. That is going to, which is going to be the final marking up, the final marking up for whether you go to heaven or hell. Hallelujah. Amen. So the final marking up is coming, which is the mark of the beast, the 666, the implementation of the chip in your right hand or your forehead. That thing is coming. And this that we're seeing with how the governments are operating, how they're shutting down things, how they're, you know, shutting us in our homes. You can't go there. You can't do this. And causing mass panic. It is a test run to test the world. You notice the corona is worldwide. That is what you must look at, brothers and sisters. This is not just, okay, you know, it's in China and that is it. No, brothers and sisters, this thing is affecting every single continent, every single country on planet Earth. You know, it's plaguing everybody, whether it's in your country fully or not, but you're still thinking about it because nobody want to get it. And that is the task. Of the taskmaster, the evil taskmaster, Lucifer, using his minions to carry to carry out his job. So this thing is worldwide. We know that. Okay. And see how, see how the governments are operating. Look at the things that they're putting into place, brothers and sisters. Look at how they're putting stuff in place because of this virus okay because it's it's all hidden in plain sight because you see they have to test run before the beast and you know who the beast is barack obama before he comes back on the scene and let me just do this as a side note since i mentioned barack's name the whole entire world is going to be in awe when that man comes back as the united states of america president because it's it's happened, I think, one time before, but not on a huge scale. But when he comes back, brothers and sisters, please know that you're looking at the beast. Let me just say this before YouTube closes me down, because they will at some point, because I talk too much and I know too much, you know. So I just wanted to put that out there as a side point. Okay, back to what I was saying concerning the mark of the beast. Um. So, yeah, so this is a, t the, the corona is a, test run for the whole entire world to see who will fall into place how your governments will follow the beat and they are following them to the suit brothers and sisters <clears throat> they're following they're following the, the, the elite hidden government to the suit brothers and sisters so that when the mark of the beast comes when they implement this chip or worship or worship the image of the beast. And I'm in prayer about that. I'm in prayer about that one, brothers and sisters, concerning the image. Concerning the image of the beast. I'm, I'm truly in prayer. And as soon as the Most High released the information to me, I will come and let you know what's the image of the beast because we know that the mark you know it is it is in your right hand or your forehead okay so it's a mark in your right hand and your forehead that is, that's a physical aspect and then the spiritual aspect is those who worship who who, who, who think the beast is is the messiah okay so that's a spiritual aspect any one of those you do you're going to hell anyway okay so, <clears throat> so brothers and sisters, this is a test run to see how people are going to operate when the final determination comes into full force, full effect to see whether you're going to heaven or hell. Because you know that if you take the mark of the beast, that's it for you. You are done for. You are not fit for glory. <laughs> You know, you're not fit to see the Messiah. There's absolutely no way you're going to go there. And you cannot take it out of your hands. Okay? You cannot take this thing. Uh, sorry, just a minute. Uh, no, no, no. Go back, please. Thank you. That's my son. He wants to come in the video. Right. Kaylin, please go downstairs. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah. My 16-year-old. That's my 16-year-old autistic son. 
his school is closed, brothers and sisters in the UK. So his school is closed. And I think my other two younger son, the four-year-old and the eight-year-old, I think their school is going to clo be closing this Friday. All right. So the closing of everything. Um. So, yeah, you won't be you won't be fit for glory. All right. If you take this man, this 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 mark of the beast. All right. Now, let me touch a little bit on the vaccination, because I know there's a lot of watchmen and watch women on the wall for the Lord that's talking about this. Brothers and sisters, I can confidently. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can confidently tell you, do not take the vaccination for this man-made pestilence. Do not do it. Don't take it. Not under, under no circumstances, you take that vaccination. And if they want to vaccinate your kids, you, 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 you go all the way. Do not take this man-made pestilence pestilence vaccination because if you it is not the mark of the beast i can i can tell you that i can confidently i can confidently tell you that the vaccination that they're creating now for this corona man-made pestilence it is not the mark of the beast so don't worry okay don't worry but the reason why i'm saying don't take the vaccine is because it's got side effects literally will kill you might not kill you straight away, but five, ten years down the line, depends on how long the Lord tarry, or even two years or a year, you know, this thing is going to end up messing up your system, messing up your system. So don't take it. It's very, very wicked. And yes, I'm advocating it on this channel. Do not, by any means, by any circumstances, do not take the vaccinate the vaccination to counteract the man-made pestilence corona. Don't do it, brothers and sisters. Okay, I got to stop there, people. I'm already over an hour. I knew it would be um, about like an hour and 12 minutes. And I got to read um, Turbulence coming from Byron Searle. Uh, these are the people that I wanted to present these messages from. Uh, Betty and Jonathan and Carrie Geddon and also Byron. So I'm going to read Byron's message. It's pretty long, but I got to get it read. I read it last night. Uh, then I'm going to end this video. I'm not even going to do a, a, a additional thing for Maranatha today. I'm going to end this video because I'm already over. Uh, and I just want to, guys, I'm um, telling you to be paying attention, paying attention to God's messengers. Uh, I really feel they are God's messengers. So um, I know I can be, a, I'm a messenger as well, but I'm just saying I know we all working in the body of Christ together, the body of Messiah Yeshua. Yahushua HaMashiach, together. Uh, so he has his people scattered. So I uh, just wanted to come and tell you guys to be really preparing, preparing, preparing. Turbulence, turbulence, turbulence. March 20th, 2020. Uh, 1 Samuel 4, 19, 22. And his daughter-in-law, uh, Phinehas, wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken... And that her father-in-law and her husband were dead. She bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her. Uh, and about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Iskabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. Okay, this is what Jonathan, not Jonathan, I mean, this is what uh, Byron is saying. Uh, while I was in prayer the evening on 31720, the Lord spoke the word turbulence several times to me. 
That was all he said to me at that time. But I sensed that he was going to continue speaking to me about this over the next day or so. The following day on 318, while I was driving to work at 6.30 a.m., the Lord began speaking to me. He said these words to me, turbulence is rough. It's invisible and will toss you to and fro. Throughout the day at work, I kept hearing the word turbulence in my spirit. And I pondered the words that the Lord has spoken to me that morning. When I got home from work that evening, I went straight away into prayer. After a time of prayer and seeking the Lord, I was suddenly shown a vision in three separate parts. Here's what the Lord showed me. Okay, guys, listen. Okay, listen. Uh, bear up me. I hope I can get through this here. Uh, part one, I was taken high up into the air, and it seemed as though I was flying through the atmosphere like Superman, so fast, soaring with such tremendous speed, I saw in the far distance a very large plane. As I got closer to it, I knew it was a 747. It was so beautiful, all shiny, with distinctive coloring of red, white, and blue on the tail, which resembled the American flag. This jumbo jet was so beautiful, immaculate, gleaming, shining, polished. Not a speck of dirt was upon it. I saw the name of the jet written on its side in a very beautiful strip. It said, Spirit of America. I was so taken by its beauty on the outside that I could not stop looking at it. Then I, in then I instantly taken, I was instantly taken inside into the plane. I began walking around among the passengers and noticed that everyone was dressed very nicely, very expensively. I then knew that I was in the first class section. The people did not have a care in the world and were only focused on socializing and eating and drinking. I left that area and took the stairs down from the upper level and saw people in this section sitting in their seats, watching movies or eating snacks. As I moved towards the back of the plane into the economy section, people were sleeping and some had on face masks like they might be sick. All of a sudden, I heard the pilot make a frantic announcement. Turbulence is ahead. Be seated and fasten your seatbelts. The people in the first class section ignored the pilot altogether and continued with their laughter and enjoying their time. The people in the second class section heard the pilot and some of them heeded his warning and went and sat in their seats. The people in the economy section were in their seats already, but many were still asleep. Then suddenly the big jet jerked and shook violently moving wildly in the turbulence air. The first class people were all thrown around like rag dogs, tossed to and fro as the Lord had said to me that morning, and many were injured and killed because they failed to heed the pilot's warning. The second class passengers were also thrown around, but a few of them were able to grab into the seats and to keep them from being injured. They were severely shaken but still alive. The economy class people were shaken so strongly that they woke up and many cried out and they were not injured. Part two, all of a sudden I found myself on a huge sailing vessel, a luxury liner. It was like a floating city, so big and captivating, beautiful on the outside. I saw the ship's name on its bow and it said USS Pride of America. I saw all of the people on board and everyone was having the time of their lives like one big party. They had not a care in the world. Food was plenteous. The dancing was beautiful and all seemed to flow with the gentle rolls of the ship. I walked all around the ship and noticed a few people were wearing face masks and looking a bit green, pale, and sickly in color. Then suddenly I heard the captain of the ship make an urgent announcement over the intercom. He was shouting very loudly, brace for impact. For most people totally ignored the stern warning from the captain. Then, an instant, then in an instant, the ship rolled side to side so violently that many people was tossed to and fro and fell over overboard and perished. Some people had frantically grabbed a hole of poles and stationary objects and side rails to keep from being thrown off the ship. Things on the 
things on the deck were flying around and thrown about and hit many people and injured them. I noticed one group of people who seemed like they were prepared for the turbulence waves. They had fastened themselves down with ropes, securing themselves to fix immovable objects. Okay, this is part three. I was then suddenly whisked away to the outside of a giant building, looking at this enormous building that was so beautiful on the outside, all shining white marble and glistening stained glass. I could not take my eyes off of it. I saw such breathtaking beauty and did not want to stop looking at it. Then I saw the name on the building. It said I Ishkabob, I written across the front in big golden letters. I went inside the building and there was thousands of people all holding up their hands towards heaven in worship. I went further in but did not hear a sound, not one sound. I thought it was very strange but continued looking all around. I then saw people on the stage who were singing and playing instruments. Yet again, not a sound was heard. I then looked upon the faces of all the people who were standing. I saw no joy on any of their faces, just a blank stare, like they were only going through the motions of worship. I saw many people busy on their phones. Some were playing games. But one thing suddenly caught my attention and stood out very clearly. I did not see one Bible anywhere in the building or in anyone's hands. The people were seated. The people were seated as the pastor got up and started preaching, yet still no sound came out of his mouth. Everything that I was seeing take place in this beautiful building was surely an eerie sight to behold. Then all of a sudden, without warning, one lone man stood up from within the midst of the audience and proclaimed with a very loud voice, a voice that rang out and could be clearly heard all throughout the building, repent and turn from your evil ways. Then suddenly the earth began to shake violently violently and all of the pillars of the building started to bend at the turbulence of the earth shaking everything that could shake shook violently throwing the people to and fro and then to their knees the vision ended then the lord spoke this word to me my son i am about to cause great turbulence to this world those who know me those who know me are ready. Those who do not will be shaken to the core. I am the captain, the Lord of hosts, and I have been shouting to be prepared. But like many, they have ignored my warnings. I say unto you, the turbulent times are upon you. Are you ready? Many of you will ignore this vision as just a figment of a man's imagination. But I say unto you, it's too late. My son, I love my people, but the time to walk in great faith is now upon you. I am coming just as my word says, reach the loss now for soon you will not be able to. Reach the loss now for soon you will not be able to. Amen. Messiah Yeshua, Lord Jesus. This is what I've been telling a lot of people been saying as Betty Stevens been saying, it's time to do what you can while you can. I've been telling you the same thing. Whatever you can do. I had a dream about the families trying to hold their wives back, uh, wives trying to hold their husbands back. I told you it's time to preach. It's time to do whatever you can do. Stop listening to families. Stop listening to nobody but the voice of God and lead. let him lead you and guide you right now, people, into all truth and to do the things that he called you to do it's time to do it now it's time to do it now so i'm gonna go now people i just had to get this out to you uh, i do want to mention one other person here uh go and listen to the rest of these uh messengers i didn't get to play i played mostly all the betty's but go and listen to the rest of uh carrie Giddens message you can listen to jonathan's message uh very very uh gifted man of god oh my goodness very gifted i've been listening to all his videos uh he have a lot to say a lot to say so uh you need to listen to him and all the brothers in Africa need to listen to him as well as he's trying to get people to understand what's going on in Africa because a lot of the tribes need to repent. A lot of the people need to repent in those nations. Uh, so I do want to ask you guys to go and listen to, uh, wow, I can't find him now here. I thought I had him on the screen. But I want you to go and listen to uh, Ken Raggio, uh, uh, a message. I don't have it up here, so I must be went away or something. But I will put it for sure in the description box because I thought I put it in yesterday. Oh, here it is. Uh, quarantine and social distancing, 
distancing a lesson in holiness. He's talking about holiness here, and it's a really wonderful 40-minute uh, uh, audio here, uh, video. It's really wonderful. I want you to go listen to it, so I will put it in the description box. But right now, I'm going to go now. Uh, I know I'm over. I know I'm about uh, yeah a minute. I knew it was going to be like a hour and 24 minutes because I had to cover so many messengers here but uh you can go ahead and play them at your own time you know play a little bit of, at a time whatever uh so let me go ahead and uh let me go ahead and I'll uh, get this video over uh I just want to thank you guys for all the offerings uh, all to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows and those in mission fields all over the world uh we may Yahuwah Meshua May Yahuwah, Messiah, I'm sorry, richly bless each and every one of you guys out there. Uh, so you can send your offerings to marner.campbell at gmail.com. I wish all of you guys would actually send your message. Send your offerings to PayPal if you can. Uh, a lot of you, I know, are not on PayPal. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and mail them in, go ahead. Because if things get really crazy, we, have, we may have to close our post office box. I hope not. But if things get really crazy, we may have to close it. I don't know. But go ahead and mail in your donations to Fill My Cup Ministries, post office box 414, uh, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. And so I'm just going to go now, people. You have, guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Please have enjoy your Shabbat and uh, have a wonderful Shabbat. And if hopefully I'll be back tomorrow, if possibly on Shabbat. But uh, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Friday night and enjoy yourself. Pray and pray and pray without ceasing. It's time to pray without ceasing. Father, be with the people watching. Help us to really uh, know that you are warning us to all your messengers, all your uh, uh, watchmen, uh, people, all your prophets and prophetess, Father. Just help people to realize these are serious times. Your uh, life is on the edge. Your life is on the edge. It's time for you to choose life and not death. So, Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit come and be with all the people watching. Uh, we bind Satan and all his evil angels below beyond beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. We ask for your Holy Spirit, your latter rain to come quickly, to come quickly. We're going to need your power, Father. Help us to get through these things coming on the earth. You said to pray that we'll be worthy to escape them. Help us to be escape, to escape these things coming on the earth, Father. Bless your holy, holy name. We love you so much. We so happy that you are my, I'm so happy that you are my Savior, you are my God, and you are all God, all by your yourself absolutely and so we just thank you father for your love for us your care for us bless your holy holy name so i'm gonna go now people you guys have a wonderful shabbat shalom love year. you so much and happy new year happy new year happy new year uh jewish new year hebrew new year so uh thank you so much my husband say happy new year so love you guys we love you so much bye bye shalom shalom shabbat shalom uh soon be sabbath here coming hours later uh hour and 27 minute video so have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Shabbat. Bye-bye. Love you guys so much. Bye-bye.